Hey everybody, Spike here with Heartbreaker Relics. Welcome back to our channel. If you saw the last video, you saw the little tease that Randy gave at the end about the artifact that we had coming up. And if you didn't see it, I'm going to play that for you right now. In about a week or so, we're going to have a video out on a point that Matthew found, Mad Moccasin, not far from where we are right now. Uh, if it turns out what all the experts think this point is, uh, this is going to be a game changer. It, it will help rewrite Native American history as we know it. Well, it turns out that the artifact was everything that the experts thought it was. And without me going into detail about it, I'm going to let Matthew tell you about it. And we're going to show you the find and tell you why it is so significant. So let's take a look at this. The past has always been of great interest to me. I was fascinated by it so much that I obtained my undergraduate degree in history. I spent my whole life living in South Mississippi and it is a great place to have hands-on experiences with archeology span and history because our area is blessed with an abundance of Native American artifacts. A few weeks ago, I went on a creek hunt and I found something I consider to be a monumental find for myself and South Mississippi. It is an artifact that represents a personal lifetime achievement and a special prize for our local community of enthusiasts and academics. We believe it is also significant to our knowledge and understanding of the settlement of the Americas in that it supports the possible migration of peoples from east to west. It is a Clovis point made of exotic material to the state of Mississippi. A Clovis is one of the rarest projectile points in the world, and it is arguably the first true American invention. I hope you enjoy the remainder of this video. <laughs> you know, I found that good point the other day, <laughs> and uh, I went up to I found the airhead that every airhead hunter dreams about today. And for all you airhead hunters, when I move my hand, you're going to know exactly what kind of point this is. Alright, go ahead and get it. That, my friends, is a true paleo point. That is a Clovis. Man. And it is going to be translucent. Where is the sun when you need it? But you can, it is translucent. Gosh. Let me get it up close again. Tell, tell me what I've got, Mr. Sands. This is a fluted Clovis point. It's fluted on both sides. However, there's a, a rotten space in the rock here. And when the, he struck that flake off, it hit that place and made it hinge out. That's why the, you can see the hinge scars on it. That's why the flute doesn't go further. And then the up, opposite side is a little bit better. He made several smaller flutes. Most fluted points in Mississippi, most Clovis are not fluted all the way. That, that's very, very rare with the rock we have around here. So this is classic fluted clothes point, no doubt about it. Okay, and we're going to try to determine the material yep. uh, through some testing. Yep. Yep. Tell me how old you think that point is? Uh, anywhere from about 12,500 to about 14,000 years old. And thanks again to my friends, Spike and Randy. Thanks to my hunting partner on this trip. Mr. Chris Hughes, and thanks to archaeologist Sam Brooks and geologist James Starnes of Mississippi and geologist Guy Harley Means of Florida for their professional examination and identification and future written publications.
every time we find a point, we're thinking about all the, the the backstory behind it, how it got there, who made it, whatever. But when a point like this is found, it really starts our minds to, to, to work in this. There's just so many things to ponder. Just the fact that this point is a Clovis point is exciting and significant in itself because they're very rare in our area and there are estimates that less than 10,000 of them have ever been found, making it the rarest artifact in the world. But what makes this point so significant is that it's made from a material that is exotic to the state of Mississippi, as Matthew said. This material came from Florida. That would suggest that they migrated from Florida to this area on their way west. One thing we need to remember too that the during this time for the Clovis people, there weren't a lot of people around. These folks traveled around in small units and they followed the megafauna around. They didn't have trade networks. They didn't have uh, permanent or semi-permanent villages. They'd stay in a spot till the game was gone and then they'd move on. James Starn sent some pictures of examples of this material that came from around the Tampa area. And assuming this point was made in the Tampa area, just think of the travels that it made. This material wasn't traded from Florida to somewhere here in Mississippi. That point was made in Florida, and they brought it here while they were following game. When they made that point, they didn't take off and just run all the way across Florida and what is now Alabama over into Mississippi and then lose that point. They may have made roundabout circles all out through the southeast before they ever made it to this part of the country and lost this point. Their life expectancy wasn't very long. It's possible that this point was even handed down uh, from one person to another. One died, I'm sure another one would pick it up. I mentioned to James Starnes that I hope this was uh, just another data point to help settle the argument whether they came from east to west or west to east. It, uh, and this is what he said. He said, this is a hugely significant find in that respect. It really adds to our understanding of this early time period. Florida is one of the first places to have well-documented pre-Clovis assemblages. It just makes sense that that later developed into the Clovis tradition in the southeast and spread out from there. Then I asked, is there an official material name? And James said, it's agatized Carl or Carlene Agate. Technically speaking, it's pure chalcedony with opaline vugs. That's geological speak there, but that's got such a little white specks in it. The geology of the outcrops of it range in age from Miocene to Pliocene. To touch on it again, it's not so much that it's a Clovis point, but it's the material that it's made from. We cannot overstate the importance of this find. Clovises are found. It's rare. We may even find one in our lifetime before our, before our hunting days are over with. But the odds are of finding one made out of this material that came as far away as this did from Florida and adds another data point to the theory that these people moved from east to west. The odds are just astronomical. And before we get out of here, we want to congratulate Matthew on his find. That is definitely the find of a lifetime. So if we told you it was pretty, pretty neat, huh? Let us know what you think in the comments. What do you think? Do you think east versus west? Which way do you think they came? Is it important? Why is it important? We just think it's cool, and we're just proud to have played a small part of it. Thank you for coming along. Check out some of our other videos and uh, some of our merchandise if you'd like. And uh, as always, thank you for your support, and we'll catch you all on the next one.